Hello and welcome to the first tutorial of working efficiently in Photoshop. The whole purpose of this series is to make non-destructive edits to files and to preserve those original files. Uh, so later on you can make quick updates and changes without having to spend a lot of time doing that or having to redo what you had previously done. It's also beneficial to be able to uh, quickly maneuver within your Photoshop file. Uh, in this first tutorial we're going to be learning about masks and there's a lot of benefits to masks as we'll find out. We're going to be working with uh, this file which is a banner that has a lot of layers involved. Um, there's a lot of masks, uh, smart objects, effects and filters, adjustments that are all what we're going to be using um, to work efficiently in Photoshop. So I went ahead and opened this image of this family embracing and we're going to be applying a mask to remove the background uh, from this uh, foreground of the family. And there are two different types of masks. There's a vector mask and a pixel mask. And a vector mask uses mathematical points to draw shapes. And you can draw those shapes using the pen tool and uh, by masking out objects. The pixel mask uses pixels and uh, if you paint uh, a pixel black, um, it will remove that pixel. If you paint it white with the pixel mask, uh, it will add that uh, pixel back in. Uh, we're going to be working first with the uh, vector mask. So go ahead from the toolbar and select the pen tool. And then also open up the uh, mask window. If that is not open, go to your top uh, menu and select window and then masks from the drop down. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, double click on the image of this family and I'll get a pop up and just select OK and what this does is it re uh, unlocks the layer and then um, click the right icon in the masks window and this is uh, the button for adding a uh, vector mask and then also make sure you see at this top uh, toolbar or the top tools window uh, there's the options for a path and there's options for a shape and we want the option for a shape selected. So I'm going to zoom in to this bottom corner and I'll select my pen tool again and when I uh, click it uh, makes an anchor point and when I drag it's the handlebars and uh, the handlebars are the direction of my, of my path when you work more with these, you'll, you'll start to really get a feel for how these work. And then I'm going to create an anchor point here. And as you can see, we have this nice curve developing. And as I let go, you can see the mask is already being applied, but now I can't see my image. So in the mask window, go ahead and change the density. Um, as you see, you can drag it down. You can see the image revealing. I'm going to go ahead and put it to zero, because that way I can see the full image. When I drew that last anchor point, I drug the handlebars in this direction, and I want to change the directions. I don't want to go this way anymore. What I can do is you can hold down the Alt key and select on that anchor point, and what it does is it removes uh, the handlebars in the, in the direction that you had previously dropped. And now I can continue on selecting around this girl. Alright, as you can see I have completed um, the tracing the path along the shape and the background is now no longer visible. And if we um, decrease the density of the mask, you can see the background um, is now visible. That is how you make a vector mask. I'm going to show you how to turn this vector mask into a pixel mask. To do that, you select the direct selection tool from the toolbar, and it's uh, the one that's below the pen tool. Now click on the path that you created with the vector mask. Right click and select Make Selection. Click OK, and you can see that the selection is, is now made. If you go to the bottom right side, there's this set of tools here. If you click on the square icon with the round uh, circle in the middle, um, click on that, and it doesn't look like anything changed. But if you look in your layers panel, you can see that a thumbnail has been added. And that's the pixel mask. If I disable the vector mask, it looks like nothing happened. 
but that's because the pixel mask has taken on the same selection as the vector mask. And if I disable the layer mask uh, for the pixel mask, you can see that the background is now visible. And to enable and disable these, what I'm doing is right-clicking and just selecting Enable or Disable. And you're probably asking yourself, why would you con convert a vector mask into a pixel mask? Because it looks like it's doing the same thing. And the reason is because you get options to manipulate this pixel mask. If you click on the thumbnail for the vector mask, the options for mask edge, range, color range, and invert are not available in the mask window. And if you click on the pixel mask, you can now see that those options are enabled. If you click on mask edge, I'll show you what these, these tools do. You can feather this edge of the selection. You can contract it. Now you can see that uh, you, you see less of the people. And if you expand it, you're going to see more of the, the background. You can choose uh, how much you want it feathered. And um, the contrast of the feathered edge, if I increase it, you can see that it's not really that feathered. Um, if you decrease it, uh, you see that there's um, a lot more feathering going on. I'm going to select Cancel. Um, but you can see that you, you get other options to manipulate your subject. And uh, that's one way of creating a pixel mask. Um, another way I'm going to show you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, hold the Alt key, and then click on your layer and drag down and let go. And that's how you just duplicate the layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the vector mask, and I'm going to delete the pixel mask. Now you can see that those are completely gone. I'm going to move uh, that layer to the top. And now you can see that this is just the original file that we used. Um, but earlier I told you that if you paint a pixel uh, mask uh, black, uh, it removes. And if you paint it white, it adds. So uh, again, we're going to select on, make sure your image is selected. And then uh, click on that icon for the mask. And uh, that's you know, the square icon with the round uh, center. And I'm going to zoom in here. And I have my black is in my foreground, so that means I'm going to be removing uh, part of the image. And as you can see, I'm just brushing. Oh, my! I'm going to turn this layer off. Um, you can see that uh, I went into the image, but you're like, hey, that's OK, because it's a mask. If I uh, hit X, uh, it toggles back and forth between these two colors, you can see. And white adds back. So I'm going to add the white back in. All right, let's try this again. So you can follow along um, the edge. And you can see I'm doing a sloppy job. Um, it's kind of it's a little more difficult with the mouse. If you have a Wacom tablet, it's a little easier. Um, but you can see, essentially, it's um, doing the same thing. It's removing um, that background by using the brush tool. This is just uh, another way to perform a mask. I prefer using a vector mask because uh, it's, I feel it's quicker and you're able to make uh, smooth curves because you know, you're, you're uh, making two points and you're able to uh, create a really nice curve between those two points. Versus, you know, with you're trying to move a mouse around along a curve, you get a little jagged. So those are some options on how to do uh, masks. You have a vector, a pixel, and you have a variety of ways to create those. I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. Turn this layer back on that has the uh, vector and the pixel mask. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now uh, take this image our cutout image and drop it into the banner file. I'm going to move it up because now it's in the back. Okay. You can see it's way too large. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it to a smart object and I'm going to make it smaller. So it fits ever so nicely into this area. All right. 
Now, I like the placement of that, um, but we have a problem. You can see that the banner is um, on the on the corners. It's further in than it is in the middle. It's kind of bowing out here in the middle. So my family image is outside of the boundaries of this banner, and that's not good. So this banner, background banner, it's a shape. It's I use the pen tool to create a shape. And you can see if I zoom in, here's my uh, anchor point, there's my handles. This is a um, vector, and that is the path. So automatically when you create a uh, shape in Photoshop, it generates a vector mask. Now I'm going to hold the Alt key and select on the vector thumb, and I'm going to drag it up and drop it, over top of the family. So that's copying that vector mask and placing it onto the family mask. And you can see now that the family is now subtracted where they were out of bounds of the banner. So that's another way you can um, do masks is you can copy them uh, from previous shapes. Okay, another type of mask is a clipping mask. Now, a clipping mask can be used if you want an image to conform to the shape of something else, to fill in the shape of something else. And I'll show you an example of that. That might sound confusing now. Um, I'm going to turn off the colored paper and the uh, banner background. And I'm going to draw us a star. Okay, you can see the star there. What I want now is I want this family image to fill in the star. So I need to uh, rearrange the layers. I'm going to put the star layer on the bottom and the family layer on top of that. If I hold the Alt key and select in between these new layers, you'll see that an icon appears, and click, voila, the family image is now inside it has conformed within that star. And I can select on this family image and move it around. And um, I'm moving it within the star. The star has not moved. And I can place that you know, wherever I want it. So there you have clipping masks. All right, lastly and quickly, I'm going to talk about applying masks to a group of layers instead of layers individually. I have deleted the star and I'm going to change the, our family's blend mode to luminosity and you can see we get this cool effect. I'm also going to turn on a layer of smoke and swirls I previously made and each one of these lines of these swirls are individual layers and we have the uh, little amber glows on a separate layer and then also the um, smoke in, uh, in the background here on a different layer. Now all of these are grouped into one layer and as you can see here, if I zoom in, the smoke and the little ambers have gone beyond um, this colored area, and I don't want that. And instead of applying a mask to these all individually, I can apply it to as a group. So click on the layers, layer mask, and I can just quickly mask out that area that they were going beyond that edge. And voila, there you have it. You can see that uh, that is masked out on that group of layers. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial on masks. Next tutorial will be on smart objects. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you next time.